Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a program that writes uh, 3D objects into an STL file output of type ASCII and I'm going to be using MATLAB 2020 revision B for this. If you go to Wikipedia you can see that there's a, a, an explanation on the structure on how the file can, uh, has to be written and there are a lot of very good tutorials on youtube that go over what each of the lines mean sadly in at least in my case since i am not uh, very good at programming it is really hard to translate the information given here or in the tutorial videos to write a code so that's the purpose of of this video hopefully by the end of this video you can you have a working program that works for most 3d objects I would still recommend go and watch another tutorial video that goes over exactly what the STL file is supposed to represent because I'm not going to go over that. Right now all I want to show you is uh, the different lines that your file must contain and the information that must be provided to the software that's going to read your 3D object in order to generate a successful and an accurate representation of your 3D object. The first line has to be uh, solid, then it can be followed by anything you want but it has to start with solid space and then followed by something so this section right here is going to be repeated over and over again so this depends on how many faces we have on our model if we have 20 faces then this is going to be repeated 20 times the n i n j and n k are the indices for the vertices of this face remember the face is a triangle so you have three vertices so i j and k then outer loop must be included the, the word vertex and then the coordinates x y and z for each of the of the three vertices so you're going to you have three vertices you have three ver uh, vertices here and each one has three points x y and z then you add n loop and face it and then you repeat again for the next one when you are done with listing all the faces you just type n solid and you can write the name again again this part is optional all you have to do is ensure that n solid is written at the end and solid is written at the beginning so let's go to MATLAB so the strategy is that we're going to create a new file and we're going to store all the data uh, inside this file. So first of all, we need to give it a name and we can create a new variable for that. That's going to be useful if we, if we want to change it. So let's call it my underscore stl dot stl. Here it's important that you add the extension dot stl. We need to create a 3D geometry. So for this, I am going to be using uh, MATLAB's building functions especially to create a sphere, so x, y, and z is going to be equal to sphere. Okay, so if we run this, we should get x, y, and z, 21 by 21. Now we have to tell MATLAB to open this file, and this file is going to be in writing mode, so we can edit the file. We're going to do this. I'm going to create a new variable called output. It's going to be equal to here the function f open and we are going to open which is file open and we're going to open a file with the same name we wrote here in this case since there's no file we're going to create one in quotation marks w w for write and you can also write r for read in case you want to import a data to your code so the next thing we can do is write the word solid into the file we just created because that's the first thing we have to do so f print parenthesis output so here we're going to specify what we want to write specifically so we can write solid and that would do the job to run this so here if you open the the your file with the notepad you can see that the word solid is there but i also want this name to be added next to solid brackets around this we're going to add a space here and then in the variable name MATLAB is going to print solid space and followed by the name whatever we gave it. So running this, you can see that it says now solid my underscore underscore stl dot stl. Perfect. Now I want to extract the the information regarding the rows and the columns from these arrays. You can see that they are 21 by 21. So I want to get how many rows and how many columns I have. So I can do rows is equal to size of here it, it can be size of x, y, and c, doesn't matter, I'm going to be using x. 1, and then columns is equal to size x2. So before, before moving forward, here I have opened the x array. Uh, I want to show you how the information from the YouTube tutorials that explain you how to write STL files 
translate to write in the code because this is the part where it, it wasn't clear to me. So what we're going to do is that we're going to we're going to start grouping uh, vertices together with a pattern and the pattern is going to be first we're going to let's say we start from the top left corner we're going to uh, group this uh, coordinate here one one then then the one to the right and then the one below the one to the right so it's going to be in this case one 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 two and two two and then the next pattern right after it is going to be this one right here this one right here and this one right here so it's going to be two two um two one and one one so essentially what we did is going to be is, is going to be doing like uh an upside l here and then go back to the first place doing a normal l if, if we were going to refer to these coordinates with their indices and the rows are determined by i and the columns are determined by j then let's say that right here this is our cell i j the one to the right is going to be i comma j plus one the one below it is going to is going to be i plus one comma j plus one this one right here then for the next uh, pattern is going to be i plus one comma j plus one this is going to be i plus one comma j and then go back to i j so we're going to do this for each one of these points so we're going to start here this point do this upside L, then do a normal L, then we're going to move to the next one, do the same. Upside L, normal L, next one. And then we're, when we are done with this row, we're going to go to the next one. And all the way until one before the last. So I am going to create two for loops. The first one is going to be for the rows, which are determined by I, which is going to go for, from one, two, rows, sorry rows minus one remember that we don't go all the way through and the next one the next for loop is going to be j is equal to one goes from columns minus one now we are going to start listing the the first face we're going to specify v1 the vertex one vertex two and vertex three and we start from here uh, vertex one would be this one vertex two would be this one and vertex three would be that one v1 is going to be equal to something v2 is going to be equal to something and v3 is going to be equal to something now the vertices have, have three values x y and c so they are going to be a list of x y uh, so just like we said before the first vertex is going to be the indices are going to be ij for x y and c so the next one is to the right of ij so that means it's going to be i comma j plus one so we can do this plus one and in vertex three is going to be below vertex two so that is going to be i plus one comma j plus one so essentially what we have done now is listed the three points that make up the the facet and what we have to do now is to find the normal vector of this facet. And the way we do this is since we have here three points, we can create two vectors and we can cross multiply them. And that's going to give us a, a normal vector to the surf, to the, to the facet. And I'm going to call vector one. And we can choose any, any of these two points and sub subtract them from one another. So I'm going to su subtract, uh, b1 minus b2 and then b1 minus b3 so something like this so vector 1 is going to be the vertex 1 minus vertex 2 and ve vector 2 is going to be vertex 1 minus vector 3 so then we can create another variable which is going to contain the normal for these two we're going to cross multiply the two vectors so vector 1 comma vector 2 I don't know if it is necessary, but I'd like to have the unit vector of this. So that means that whatever the results we get from here divided by the uh, magnitude of that vector is going to give us a unit vector. I don't know if it's necessary to have that on the STL file, but I'd like to do that. So the magnitude is calculated by uh, taking the square root of, uh, of this vector squared. So we can call it magnitude 
is equal to square root of the first term in the normal uh, vector plus can copy this it's going to be the second sorry the second and the third and finally we can get the unit normal vector which is going to be equal to norm over mag okay so right now we have all the information we need to write one loop of into the, the file. So we have all the three vertices of one facet and we have the normal vector of that facet. But before exiting this, uh, this loop and printing the, and moving on to the next facet, remember that we have two patterns here and, I, and it is done the exact same way. So I'm just going to copy the whole thing here. It doesn't matter if they have the same names for now, it's, that's going to change later. So first, the first vertex, vertex remember that it's going to start right here. So if, if, if before we did first this one, then this one, and then this one, we're going to start now from this one, next to the one to the left, and then the one, the one above to the one on the left. So it's going to be the this very first one, right? The very last one, sorry. Now the one to the left of that is going to be i plus one comma j. So like this, and then the next one is going to be the initial point, right? So that's going to be i and i comma j. So I'm just going to copy paste this so we don't lose time. It's essentially using the fprint function. So the way it works is that you type fprint, open parentheses, type the name of the file ID. In this case, we gave it the name output is the, the function where you open the file. So that's your file ID, comma. And then here's your, not necessarily your input, but the format of what you want to uh, enter there. So in this case, we need to write the text face, uh, face it normal. And then these are just specifications on how I want the numbers to be printed on the file. So I have three uh, specifications because uh, the unit normal has three values so it's one for each of the three values for the x y and z and here i'm specifying that it's going to be a float number in the exponential form with seven decimals so you can specify that and this uh, backslash n is just specifying new line so here's f we already have face it normal the three uh, variables for the, the the three values for the face it normal the coordinates now we need to print outer loop and the three vertices with their respective x, y, and c values. So here we print outer loop, again adding new line at the end, then we print the vertex, here v1, v2, and v3. Remember v1, v2, and v3 also have three values, so you need to specify three formats here. Then we add the word end loop and then uh, end face it. And with that we have one face it. Now we need to do the same for the other pat pattern and you can do just copy and paste this yeah just like that so if i stop the code there and run it okay sorry if here i forgot to change the name of the of the unit so let's run it let's see if everything's fine everything looks fine now opening the stl file with the notepad you can see that everything's here so we have the start start the word solid followed by Oh, there should be the face it here. Oh, I see that the face it. Okay, so the face it uh, was printed right next to the name, and that is why we didn't add a new line here. So what we need to do is this backslash n. Okay, now now it's good. Now don't worry about this in in a and it, it it doesn't really matter. Uh, but you can see right now that we have listed two facets. This is the first one with the reverse L pattern, and then this is the second one with the normal L pattern. Now we have to do. The same thing for the entire row for the, all the columns. So uh, removing the post here and running the whole thing again. Okay, now you can see that we have a lot of uh, stuff written here, which is good. The only thing we're missing right now is just adding the end solid uh, line at the end, and that should be pretty much it. So we go to the bottom, f print f output.
and and solid and backslash n okay then we close the file with f close output and now running it we should be able to open it with a uh, with a uh, stl reader in this case i'm using a 3d builder with came with windows so if you just open this there you can see there is the the sphere now we can try this with a cylinder as well let's see cylinder there you go the cylinder so just to prove to you that the this code works for more 3d objects i have uh, written a code that, write, that creates a ring and i have commented out this line and this line so running this okay there you go here you can see there's the ring now here's for a more complex geometry which is a spherically blunted conic ogive which is a, another tutorial that i plan on doing now let's see running this it's going to take a while because it has to write a lot of stuff here you can see there's the ogive it has the conical part in the tip is a sphere that looks fine the code is working So yeah, I hope that this video was uh, helpful to you. I hope that the main idea of how to write an STL file was understood. Hopefully my explanation wasn't too complicated, overly complicated. And if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments of this video. I'm going to try to answer them as best as I can. And I'm working on uh, generating not only STL files in binary mode, but also PLY and OBJ uh, type objects. So yeah, if you're interested, I have a playlist of 3D objects generation and I thought that this video was long overdue.